All right, hello guys, how's it going? And welcome to our most up-to-date winter forecast. This is the second to last winter forecast we're gonna be making. And I plan on making a final winter forecast at the very end of November because meteorological winter starts on December 1st. So stay tuned also for that final edition, but let's get into this edition in just a moment. Now before I get into things, be sure to smash that like button, leave a comment down below, and subscribe for more weather related content. I would also like to let you guys know that if you like the video down below and also leave a comment down below with your location, I'm going to be giving out as many custom forecasts as I possibly can. So again, if you leave a comment down below with your location and also make sure to like the video, I am going to be getting back to as many of you as possible with a custom forecast. Now, let's get straight into things, and first things first, we are taking a look here at our precipitation forecast here for the winter of, obviously, 2021 to 2022. I can't believe we're almost there. Uh, one more month of fall, and then we are going to be there. We have below average precipitation expected for the southern United States in general. The biggest thing that has transpired since our most previous update is the La Nina has de developed very nicely and usually La Ninas mean less of a southern storm track and that is kind of a clear and obvious uh, reason for why I'm forecasting this. It is one of the easier things to forecast and yeah there is some things that can hinder that. Obviously it's not going to be perfect but that is one of the more strong uh, things that can happen during a La Nina. So we feel strongly confident in that. We actually have a moderate shade here of that below average precipitation as well for California, Nevada, Arizona, and New Mexico because there really shouldn't be any storms moving on shore to this region throughout the wintertime. Uh, in an El Nino, we would see the opposite. You know, we would be taking a look at above average precipitation for this southern region of the United States and also especially the southeastern, or sorry, the southwestern United States as storms tend to move on shore to those regions during El Nino. So you can tell it's totally the opposite in an El Nino or La Nina. Now we do expect above average precipitation up there for the Northwest because those storms that don't head on shore to the Southwest in a La Nina tend to go further North. They kind of just miss you guys. It's not like they don't exist. They just tend to not head into the region. They head North of you. That's why we see Washington, Oregon, Idaho, Montana, Wyoming in our above average precipitation region. And we do have a second shade of this one as well for Washington and Oregon, as well as a little bit in northern Idaho. And this is just where we're more confident, obviously, in that above average precipitation. All right, now what we're going to do is we're going to move on because we have one more above average precipitation region to take a look at in just a moment. Then we're going to move into the temperature forecast, snowfall forecast, and eventually overall forecast as well. All right, now here we are taking a look at the Northeast and the Ohio Valley as well as the Great Lakes because this is where we do expect some above average precipitation as well. A lot of those storms that move onshore to the Northwest head straight through the United States and enter into these regions here in the Northeastern corner of the country. Now, you might notice there hasn't been any massive changes on this precipitation forecast, and that is true, but I have tweaked it to my liking based on the developing La Nina and the developing negative PDO because those do change the tilt, the location, and the size of these different layers. So we do have above average precipitation expected for the northeastern corner of the country. We do have a second shade of this one as well because we are quite confident, especially there in the Ohio Valley. But not only that, the northeastern United States could see quite a bit of precipitation as well. Uh, so we're pretty confident in that region also. Let's move into the temperature forecast, and we're starting out with the southwest. This is going to be above average temperatures for this region. Uh, you, On top of seeing below average precipitation during La Nina, typically, you also usually see above average temperatures in these southern regions. So this is very typical in the pattern we're heading into, like I said. Uh, so for the southern four corner states, as well as California and Nevada, we do expect those above average temperatures for this region. Now we also have a second shade of this as well for areas further south where we're more confident this region could be a little bit smaller than what we're indicating with the orange. So we have kind of a uh, higher confidence area to the south obviously there where we're extra sure that it will take place. Uh, and that is just what our expectations are currently. We also have a bit of a southeast ridge as you can see as we add this second above average region. Uh, you know, a lot of people live here and, and they like winter obviously. Um, this does not mean it's not gonna get cold. This just means that there will be a majority of the time above average temperatures, uh, but still for 
a good percentage of the time there could be below normal temperatures as well. But when it's all said and done, December 1st to the very beginning of March, you will have more above average than you will below average. So that's just how that goes. Now here is our below average temperature region. And as you can see, it encompasses most of the northern United States. Because again, in a La Nina, the northern United States usually sees these below normal temperatures and the southern United States sees these above normal temperatures. Uh, so this is again, a very typical pattern in the current pattern we're heading into. So we feel really good about both the precipitation and the temperature forecasts. But again, there is one more update to go at the very end of November. So stay tuned for that one as that'll be our final official winter forecast. Uh, and that will be the most accurate, most likely. Now we even have a moderate shade of this below normal temperature region. Uh, and basically all that's changed, by the way, with this temperature forecast is with the warmer than normal conditions, we push them further south. But with these colder than normal conditions, we kind of push them further from the east coast. We do feel like there could be a bit of a southeast and even east coast ridge throughout portions of the winter. Usually, or, or before in our previous updates, this moderate cold would push all the way to the coast, but you can see we've kept it away. So that's one of actually the biggest changes that we made to this winter forecast. And as always, we have this third layer here as well from Montana down through the upper Midwest, Ohio Valley and Great Lakes as well, where we're extra confident in the below normal temperatures there in the north central United States. That should be where the trough is centered most of the time. Now, what we're going to do here is we're going to move on. We're going to take a look at that snowfall chance forecast and then that exciting overall forecast as well in just a moment. Now, I always remind you guys of this, but I'm going to remind you guys again. This snowfall chance forecast is basically just a combination of our temperature and our precipitation forecast to come up with a snowfall chance forecast. So in the southern United States, you could see below normal snowfall chance. That is because there's above normal temperatures, below normal precipitation. Those are two things that usually mean less snow will occur. So that's a pretty easy uh, equation to make there. Uh, now, for the northern United States, where we expect above average precipitation and below normal temperatures, we expect above normal snowfall chance. You know, very simple stuff here. Uh, but we do have a region, or sorry, two regions better yet, of this moderately above average snowfall chance. And this is where that precipitation is in the moderately above average region. So for the northwest and for the northeast, especially, we expect above normal snowfall chance. This does not guarantee you that you will see above average snowfall or, you know, it doesn't guarantee anything. This is just using the precipitation and the temperatures. What would have the best chance of happening in above normal snowfall seems to have the best chance of happening in the north and below normal snowfall chance in the south. This is compared to your normal, by the way, because you might be like, well, obviously the south is going to see less snow than the north. But this is compared to whatever your annual average is where you have above normal or below normal compared to your average, and that's what this is. Now let's move on to that exciting overall forecast. And first things first, we're starting out in the Northwest. Cool and stormy. I've been expecting this since the very beginning of our winter forecast, and I'm sticking with it. Also the Rockies, typical snow, if not above normal snowfall for you guys there in the white. South of there, warm and dry. South of you, very dry there for the very Southwest. Cold and snowy kind of to the east of the southern Rockies there. I do expect quite a few snowstorms to move through that region. We do expect uh, the polar vortex to be quite active. Based on the positive AO we've seen at times this fall, that should be supercharging that polar vortex uh, to be able to make a nice impactful appearance, or maybe not so nice depending on where you're at, uh, appearance here for the United States. Arctic blast to the south of there in that kind of magenta region. Uh, that is where it won't quite be polar vortex level, but... We could see some Arctic blasts at times. To the south of you, winter battle zone. This is just where we expect some mixed precipitation. You know, never all of one. Well, sometimes all rain, but never all snow. Sometimes ice, sometimes sleet, sometimes snow, sometimes rain. That is what could happen in a lot of your winter storms that you could see this winter. And there won't even be a lot usually. Usually there is a handful, if any. Somewhat dry for the southeastern United States. I expect it to be a little bit less dry than I originally anticipated, but it will still be somewhat dry and somewhat stormy at times for sure. Huge snowstorms will be possible for the eastern seaboard with Miller B nor'easters. We probably won't have a lot of Miller A, and by the way, a Miller A nor'easter is one that tracks all the way up the east coast starting at Florida. A Miller B is one that heads in through the north central United States, dives down towards the mid-Atlantic, and heads offshore from that point and then heads up shore uh, as opposed to all the way down in Florida. So that Miller Bay, that Miller B better yet is only 
the north the northern half of the east coast is being impacted by that that is kind of an active storm track that i do expect to be possible worst of winter inland of there obviously the coast sees a bit less snowfall so i do expect the worst of winter to be further inland where a lot of these storms could track further to the west and bring you guys all snowfall there could be some big ones for you guys there in the red area and then active lakes last but not least the lakes are very warm we already have signs of the lakes getting started here in the month of november actually so it is going to be pretty interesting to see what ends up happening for you guys there in the lake effect regions now anyway for our confidence tab we have upgraded finally on this winter forecast to a four out of six we're drawing very close to the winter time and our confidence is increasing of course, though, we will be most confident in our final update, which again is happening towards the end of the month. For today's patron highlight of the day, I want to thank you all for supporting the channel, but especially our Plana patrons, Bill Crates, James Wade, Dobie Nagel, Little the Pan, Mandy Birchfield, Patrick Strickland as well. I would also like to thank our Diamond patrons, Bill Roberts, Marcus Connolly, Noah Harley, Michael Kudalasa, Catbite, Charles Stinnett, Cindy Klein, Alan Goodmaben, Bill Dallas, Gary's, John Quilisi, Dwight Phelan, Stephen Kernethal, and Thomas D. Barr as well. If you'd like to be part of this very awesome patron entry of the day, you can do so by joining our very amazing Patreon page in the description and in the pinned comments down below. I would also thank our channel members as well, Catbite, Stephen Fan, and Jeremy Cox also. Anyway guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Be sure to smash that like button, leave a comment down below, and subscribe for more weather-related content. I'll see you guys in the next video.